welcome back I am back with another video I want to thank everyone for joining me again tonight and today I wanted to talk about the narcissistic family um, the mob I should say um, the mob or the mafia that basically you realize that you were born into um, I just wanted to bring this topic up, especially because when I finally discovered that everybody was working together and how the actual programming of the narcissistic diet, uh, paradigm, um, once I discovered how the chips was falling and how their positions on the checkerboard, because they're playing checker checkers once you figure out that then you can see everything kind of better for what it is even with and this is this is off topic but even I can see when they say about the celebrities and when they say the checkerboard reference and blah 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 it's kind of the same thing within the family um, except they're actually they're playing checkers. That's what they're trying to tell you. Um, if you are the black sheep, if you are the one that is different, if you're the one that is not afraid to speak up for yourself, others that have been wronged in your family, if you go against the grain, I guess what they say. Be prepared for the family to turn into a, a whole mob. You know what I'm saying? And they're coming after you. Especially when your family feels like they've made a name for themselves and they have a reputation to uphold. It can be a very difficult thing. I, you know, again, when you guys are in these families, don't really take it personal. I was going to say about myself, I don't really care what their positions are on, in, this, in their game of checkers. Um, that's their business and that's the way they chose to live their lives. But they involved you. You feel me? And then you start thinking about it and you stop and you see that you're, you're here for a bigger picture. So then you think about, well, They've affected others by their thought process, the way they act, the way they, their mannerisms are, the way they were brought up, um, the decisions that they made, the groups that they decided to participate in that you don't know anything about, the organizations where they, on paper, it looks good, but you don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. It's a lot of secrets. It's a lot of uh, things that may have been you know, people may have committed to before you were even born. Things that they may have wanted you to be a part of and and join. And they had you next in line to join a such organization or to for this place or this position on the checkerboard. Once they see that you ain't playing that game. Once they see that you ain't playing that game. Best believe. That they're coming after you. And it's going to be. It might start off slow. One you might. One person in the family. Then the next person. Or they may group up together. And just start teaming up against you. At that time they want you to have. Like a mental breakdown. This is when they want you to feel like. Oh my gosh, everything, everybody's against me. Everybody's coming against me. Um, everybody wants to harm me. This is when they want to tell everybody something's wrong with you. You're crazy. Peep that, y'all. Watch what's going on. When you see that people you thought you were solid with, you know, your day ones, your hitters. When you see that they start folding on you. When you see people just start folding and they start, you know, folding like dominoes, like a domino effect. Off top, yeah, look at yourself. Yeah, look at yourself. See what you've done. 
But if you can actually look at yourself, see that where you've went wrong, but then see where they have went wrong as well and what they're trying to do, how they're trying to break you down, how they're trying to play with your mental to get you to fold. You can tell that they are people that don't have your best interests at heart. Um, they don't give a dang. They ruthless. A lot of the times they wait till you at your lowest point, and that's when they come in. Um, I want y'all to just be aware, you know, with myself, once I seen everything going down, and I didn't even really see it like that. It was just God was showing me bits and pieces. So with y'all, y'all might be getting shown little bits and pieces, and you trying to make sense of it, and it's like it's not making sense, especially when a lot of your visions may be about the people that you breaking bread with that you drinking wine with, you know, that you praying with, that you might smoke with, you know what I'm saying, that you is so many things that you sleeping with, you know, that you got a kid with, that you it's so many people that God may have revealed to you um the plans that they're doing and you it's going to be hard for you to believe. So you're going to have to go through the stages of grievance during this process. You going to be what's the first stage denial? Because who wants to believe this about their own family? And, you know, it's like, take your time, trust yourself, lean on the most high. You know, this is the time where you need to really lock in with our creator, lock in, you know, because everything they had already had place, plans in place for whenever you decided to get out of line, whenever you decided to stand up for yourself, because they already knew that you're a bold person. They already know that you speak your mind. They already know that you keep it 100. They already know. They already, they've been watching you since you was a child. You're the child that asks questions. You're the child that call people out. You're the child that, you know what I'm saying? So they already had it in place. Some of them even got probably readings on you. They know people that, you know, divination. They know people that, you know, in the light spiritual side and the dark spiritual side, you know. And um, so they know a little bit of everybody. Also, they're going to keep reminding you that they know people. They got people in positions of power. This is how they keep you small or keep you from talking and speaking out against them is because they're going to remind you like, you know, hey, wherever you go in this world, I got somebody that, you know, will find you. I know everybody in this. So in your home state, you know, they're going to remind you that they got connections. So whenever you do decide to step out of line, you know, they want to instill some type of fear in you so that you won't speak up, so that you won't tell what was actually going on in the family. And it ain't got to be everybody's business, just what pertain to you. And if they happen to be a, in in it, then they're, they're getting talked about because they're in your story. They're a part of your story. And whichever way they decided to show up in your story, that's whichever way they decided to show up in your story. They know you ain't going to sugarcoat shit. You're going to give them props when props is due. And then you're going to tell the rest and what it is and what it ain't. So be prepared for people to come against you. Be prepared for your family members to be bringing up stuff you did when you were 17 years old, when you were 16, when you were so young. Um, any mistakes that you made, they made sure that they remembered them. Are they going to remember and bring up any of your accomplishments? No. Also, watch the people that's ahead. You know, when you're in a narcissistic family, these older people, these are the ones that is the ones that's in charge. The uh, what they call it. The person that's over everybody. Um, I can't think of it, but I, I'll probably get it. will probably, you know. Um, come to my mind. But um, anyways, these people are there to make sure that the family stays on track, that they stay in order, that they stay in line, that they don't go against the grain, that they make sure that they look like everybody else, that our family name stay, fits into the world. When you're 
a person that don't give a fuck about fitting in, you're a target. Then it goes a step further. So it's going to start in your family. And then you're going to start seeing that outside of your family, you're going to be targeted as well. It may be jobs. It may be school. It may be so many different things. So many different examples I can give you guys of where you're going to be targeted. And I remember even myself having a family member who said, you know, because of who we are, you're going to be targeted. So if you are a part of a spiritual, if you know that your family is very spiritual or you've inherited some gifts from somebody in your family, um, if you know that you know that you are just very powerful, it's just something about you can't really pinpoint what's going on or what you got going on. You just know that you and the Most High is connected. You're going to be targeted. If they... Put Jesus on the cross. What you think they're going to do to you? Little old you. Jesus may turn water into wine. What can you do? And we can do a lot. Don't, don't get it twisted. We can do a lot. We got the magical abilities too. But in the 3D, in the 3D, in this world, because people don't believe, you know, people only go by what they see. So I just said this to say, you got the gifts, but... To the naked eye, you ain't you ain't hitting on nothing. You feel me? And so, if that's the case, if Jesus actually showed people right in their face, look, I turned water into wine, what they gonna do to you? They don't give a dang about you. They don't care about your magic tricks. Especially if your magic tricks ain't benefiting them. They don't care that you got power. In fact, they want you to di diminish your power so that you can fit in into the, the box. So that you can make everything look good. And just because you are this truth teller. You are this person that's going to speak out. That don't mean you're perfect. And that's the main thing that they use to try to shut you up is, oh, you act like you ain't made no mistakes. You think you're perfect. Far from it. Tell them far from it. It's not a, a fact of you thinking you're perfect. It's the fact that you know that you make mistakes. You know that you accept people for who they are. But then there comes a point where, what are we doing in this family? Because I don't see nothing but cycles. And if I don't say nothing, I am selling my soul by going against what I know, what I see, what I can feel, what God is showing me and telling me that this family bloodline ain't about the right and y'all worried about the wrong stuff. And it ain't got to be your whole family because some of your family is going to take things personal, out, you know, because of the way that you're moving. You ducking and dodging that negativity. And, you know, they might not have done nothing to you, but hey, you're associated with the, the ops, the head honcho in the family. And if you don't see nothing wrong with this leader leading us to destruction, if you can't see, my God, ain't, not, ain't nothing against you, but we're not on the same frequency. So some of you aren't on the same frequency with some of these family members. These are the, the ones that are the flying monkeys, the ones that just went along with whatever the leader was saying, even though the leader was has some good in them, but they which excuse all the negative, all the low vibrational shit that the leader was doing. You're not. Y'all might have been naive. Y'all might have wanted to think that this person was at least, if nothing else, solid. These family members will even go as far as trying to kill you. Take your life so that you can't tell your story. Take your life because you aren't going with 
what they talking about. You're not going with the programming. You got to think about this world that we live in. To be an individual. To actually be unique. And actually accept yourself for it. Actually be okay. You cool with it. You cool with being different. You going you gonna to be the main ones they going to target. Because you too cool. You too cool with being unique. You too cool with being yourself. You the main ones that the family, the mob is going to go after. Your own family, your own kin is what they say. And a lot of these main characters that was leading the family, these are the main ones that's putting out hits, that's making moves behind people's behind people's backs, that's saying that they praying to God when they praying to a they praying to a God. Little G. Not the same, not the same most high you praying to. I don't care if y'all went to the same church every Sunday. Yeah, praise God and all that. That don't mean nothing. And this ain't for everybody. This is for the narcissist. People know that they was a part of a narcissistic family. You know. These people stuck by each other's side from Beginning to the end, cool, but nobody decided to go get no help. Nobody decided to ask, why is our family like this? What we can do to grow as a people? And that's okay, but these are the leaders of the family. These are the main ones that's going to judge you. Because you didn't want to follow in their footsteps. You did. You saw the footsteps. You didn't want to follow in them damn footsteps. I don't care how much money they obtained in this world. It's more than life than just money alone. So, and that's the confirmation because my dog just yelped. Isn't that right? So I just said that I just wanted to bring this quick message just like don't you know don't give up don't give in to what they talking about they got a one track mind they can't see other people's perspectives they lack empathy they think everything they did was right they didn't do nothing wrong or they may, you know, admit to some stuff, but overall, no. They will never tell somebody how they tried to kill you. And because you don't have proof, who's going to believe you? It's going to be your word against theirs. So when you see that people start to move in funny, Remove yourself away from them. Because if they showing you that they that you're not important, that you know they can team up against you. They gonna they're gonna use something that you did wrong as an excuse as to why they was treating you the way they was treating you. But be clear, they was already behind the scenes treating you like that before you made your mistake. Make sure that you love on yourself extra. Make sure that you are really connecting with the most high so that you don't feel alone. So that you don't feel like nobody loves you out here and you're willing to take yourself out of this world because of other people and how they feel or the lack of what they what you thought they should have felt for you. We can't control someone else's feelings. We can't control someone else's love, but you can control yourself as far as are you going to allow yourself to continue to replay the hurt, the abandonment, the neglect. Some of y'all was emotionally abused by your narcissistic families, severely, severely physically abused. Severely, verbally abused, psychologically, all the abuses. 
We cannot allow our adulthood to be spent replaying what happened to us when we were 18 and younger. We can, but who wants to be stuck? Who wants to let the enemy win? Don't let the enemy win because the enemy wants you to be stuck. You could tell so a lot of these family members, they traumatized you on purpose so that you was it would stunt your growth so that you would always have to de depend on them. So you got to call them and ask, what do you think is your opinion on such and such? What should I do? Can I borrow this? Can I have this? Da, 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 da. So they can go and tell everybody they know what you went through. But then they're going to tell everybody, well, I had to let them hold this. I had to let them do this. I had to do this for them so that it could cover up all the fucked up shit that they was doing. I advise y'all to try to stand on your own two feet. Move away from the narcissistic family if you're not ready for what comes along with that. It takes you to be mentally strong. You can't really be able to let whatever they say affect you. Even though you be like, sticks and stones may hurt. But, well, it's hurt me, but words will never hurt. Sh bull crap. So if you are strong enough to handle that verbal abuse or that, that manipulation and you're able to duck and dodge it, or you know, you know how you know, you know how to just let it go in one ear and out the other. And again, I was like that, just being high vibrational and positive, and able to be like, oh man, they just hating, or you know, they just trying to get under my skin. They just want me to feel insecure. But it's like I ain't gonna keep on ducking and dodging these little comments and these little mannerisms and this towards directed towards me. So, you know, that's in my case, you know, I, I just felt like I, life is too short. I don't have to put up with the bullshit. Y'all family, I shouldn't even have to be going through this with y'all. So um, it's up to y'all. I would never recommend somebody to just, it's, it's, it's up to you. Some people can't go their lives without talking to, you know, their narcissistic family members. Some people, is, they've already bred you, got you addicted to their energy and fussing with them and them hurting your feelings and then you forgetting about it and going and breaking bread with them on Thanksgiving and acting like everything's all hunky-dory. Nah, player. Nah, ain't nothing all hunky-dory. That's why people keep doing whatever they want to do because we letting shit slide. Or we say, oh, that's just them. They always cut me up. They always talk shit about me. They always treat me like shit. Fuck that. I don't give a fuck who you are. Family or not, this ain't that. So, some I don't know who needs to hear that, but learn boundaries, learn how to take up for yourself if you got to deal with these people. Because I'm telling you, I'm not dealing with them. I'm not about to come up with cute little ways to respond to my narcissistic family. Fuck y'all. That's how I'm going to respond. It, anybody, I'm talking about all the narcissists. It's saying to all your family members, but this is di directly to the narcissist, the, the ones that don't think they selfish, but they selfish than a bitch. The ones that's judging and looking down on motherfuckers and talk about, well, when I, when I was younger, this is how I played it, or this is what I did, or da da da. If ain't nobody moving like me, then they bums and they beneath me. We talking about those family members. Those family members is looking down on people. That's trying to make you break. They want to see you fold. That ain't got nothing nice to say. And then when they are nice, it's because it makes them look good. Stop, you know, dealing with that. Stop letting them gaslight you and manipulate you. So I just wanted to put that out there. It's like, again, they like the mob. Be prepared for that. That's something that I didn't even... I kind of kept asking, like, why they keep saying they know everybody and you can't run whatever state you go to. Your dad knows people, you know, so you start listening and you start piecing stuff together. And it's like all oh, people are trying to instill fear in you your whole life. If you just look back on it, the narcissist was telling on themselves over the years.
that messy ass family member that you had that everybody said don't nobody like her she talk about everybody she did that 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 be real you need to listen here hear what hear what was going on back in back in the day about ain't Bessie and 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 uncle charlie and 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 such and such and da 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 because you'll see that with narcissists there ain't nothing really changed with them they still just as messy. If they was messy at 20, they messy at 80. You feel me? If they treated you like shit when you were 16, they still gonna treat you like shit when you're 40. They don't respect boundaries. Um, basically, again, you have to be the they're a little protege. You have to be the little them. And it's like, what if you didn't even think what they had going on was about nothing? So, again, trust the most high. Lean on the most high. I know some people might not have a relationship with the most high. I really encourage y'all to just take some quiet time out. Um, really talk. Tap in. You could be like, I don't even know where to start. I ain't never talked to you before. I don't know what to say. And just talk to God, your mother and father, just like they, your homies. Because that's what I do. I'd be like, look, dig this. I'd be in tears and everything. <gasps> I did the stupid stuff. I, for real, you got to really just let it out. Like, just be real. I mean, because God already know. God is always with you. You ain't running and ducking and dodging when you're doing little stuff that you know ain't best for your highest good. God is still with you when you out on the block or when you, you know what I'm saying, or when you in church or when you everywhere, you know what I'm saying? So just talk to God just like you would your friend. You're a confidant. Take some time out. Actually talk. I'm telling you. Seek and you will find. So if you're really looking for the most high, you will find the most high. So, again, these are the messages that I wanted to bring to you. A lot of you guys that's experienced that, you might need some some professional help. Narcissists definitely will leave you confused, stuck, crazy, and you blaming yourself and thinking that you done had some type of mental breakdown when all along it's the love you have for these people with your image that you had of these people has shattered. And even if you didn't really have high standards for these people they brought your standards you already had a low standard for them and now you have to lower that shit because it's like damn y'all went lower than lower than what I expected man with the killing and the mobbing together and the slander and the wow you know so again they say hurt people hurt people and that's true you know, I just recommend, you know, everybody is hurting out here. Everybody's went through things. Grace is just, you know, forgiving these people and letting them go on with their lives without, you know, we're not trying to wish death on these people. But let God talk to these people, deal with these people. That's not your job. So thank you again for these messages. Thanks for listening to these messages. Thank you for just taking time out of your day. And I hope that if there's someone that has experienced this hurtful, I mean, one of the most hurtful things is finding out that your family ain't as solid as they as you thought they were. So I recommend you talk to somebody, get some type of help. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.